when you walk in and sneak into likely water, it looks like every fish is a gimme, glowing, flagging, but mercilessly glued to the bottom. They don't abjectly spook, but if you land your fly within two rod lengths, they'll veer on their crews. It's a game of long lead anticipation, a lot of time and observation to their roots. They're as obsessive of their game trail as we are in taking them on. Each one is a massive undertaking, precast, sitting at depth, we wait. Each cast is like a time lapse video. So this is a, a really bizarre situation because we've got a deep pool. The fish are only in deep pools on this little creek. There's not a lot of flow, but the water's clear. Um, and we've got a high cliff bank with some willows. And that's causing, the morning light is causing some serious shadows to cross the pool. At the same time, we've got a stiff upstream breeze, which kind of makes it hard to see what we're doing. I stood immediately at the downstream edge of that fish's cycle. What that allowed me to do was kind of just sit and stare at the, the shadow and sun interface line and just wait for that fish to drop out and go up along the, he was just cruising up right along that shade and sun line. And I was saying, you know what, last time we were here, these fish really didn't like any casts across them. But I said, you know what, there's wind. Let's use that to our advantage. And let's go immediately to a 17, 18 foot leader down to 4X. I had a little caddis pupa uh, on there, uh, tungsten bead. But that wind allowed me to cast gentle plop on a long leader. So you can see where Dave's reel and rod is situated, and there's a big reason for that. Um, when you're coming up on such clear water like this, uh, you want to make sure that the sun is not bouncing off anything shiny, especially a shiny reel like that, because that can just really easily spook the fish. So you want to, you know, have give yourself the best chance, and so when you're walking, keep it in shade like that. Yeah, I've got a 17, 18 foot leader down to 4x size 18 tungsten beadhead nymphs. <laughs> that is a size 18 nymph. Ah, uh, great. On but, there we go. But, when you use wind to your advantage, it really works well. Okay. We give him a drink. And got that, just panning. Beautiful. Wicked. Deep, but he's starting to face us, coming, curling. Okay. He's right off the tip of that stick that we talked about. He just okay. nymphed. No worries. My cast is out there. Well, I wonder if you don't just cast it to the left of that stick kind of now while he's up in the corner okay. and just play the cycle game because you know he's going to come back, right? And I will need your help in knowing when he's taken. Yeah, where he is here. Yeah, he's right at the stick coming up. Go for it. He's right at the stick and he came up. And then he went back into the corner, okay? okay? He's just in the bottom, nymphing by the stick there. Okay. And he's right, coming shallow to the left of the stick. Kind of right out down in front of us here. I don't see him anymore, that's the problem. No, he's way up above the stick, sitting on a pillow. Okay. Feeding, sitting. Oh, you see that? And he's coming down. Stop. 
Here he comes. He's going to have a look. Sit! I don't know how you're going to land that thing. Just time. Right? There you go. Awesome. Yeah. Woo! Yeah! Go. <laughs> nice fish. Okay. That was well, fun. Keep slowly pulling it in. No, stop there. He has a look like he wants to go out, right? Yeah. No, this is going to be pretty close. Give it a pull or no? no. This is going to be pretty close. Okay, slide it. Pull it back to you. Pull it back to you. Yeah. Let's see if he comes. You still see him? Okay, he's right there. Just keep your eye on him. No, he went right past you, love. He's feeding as he goes down in a big way. You got that? If he keeps coming, he's right underneath you. Come on, fish. Come on. He's right there. Shut! I did. It's okay. Dead, yeah, the other one's coming back down. And I think our biggest, best course of action, honestly, yeah. is to hold position and let them come back to us rather than chasing on this clear water so exposed. He's back, basically back to where he was when we first showed up. I this is all your timing, so. On it. Oh, that's tough. Go again. Nice cast. Help. You've refused. Strip. Okay, you're good. That was a refusal. Okay. No worries. Okay. Far above you. Um, right now he would be probably three, two, three rod lengths tops. He's kind of turning into the shore again. Are you on him? Oh yeah, I'm rolling. He's just cycling on this real flat, delicate water. And two things are happening. Um, a whole bunch of things are actually happening. That first time he was in tight here, I had the uh, tippet ring, the dry, and the dropper. And that's three things that could make a disturbance in the water. So I said, wait a second. Um, 
I, I, I need to minimize that. I only need one thing hitting the water. Because it's only knee deep up here on this crystal flat water. Three or four more feet, make, make it a 16 foot liter and make it 5x, completely naked with about a size 16, 18 pheasant tail nymph. Mm. I got a pre cast. Okay. To the far bank or where? Out here. Okay. Right on. Right off the bottom. That's awesome. I precast that about what, four minutes ago? Yep. And I said, I'm just going to leave it. It's a tungsten bead, so I'm just going to leave it on the bottom. Yep. Precast it, leave it there, wait for him to cycle around. And he just, as soon as I saw him, I waited till he's within a rod length of sighting. And then I just twitched it and he came right over. Awesome. That took some doing. Yeah, but, but you that was pre-planned with tungsten and everything. Yeah. Awesome. And I'm gonna try to keep this back here so we at least have the upper half of this pool for you. Okay, awesome. Do what you can. Yes. Nice. Oh, Look at that. That's just beautiful. Chunky. Happy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Really nice. So with that fish, the last thing I wanted to do is expose any part of me to the fish. I'm slightly in from the bank, about three feet, and I'm not going to cast with my elbow up. We've seen so many people through the years with their elbow up, 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 and then do this kind of casting. That's the last thing you want to do. What ends up happening is if you come up with your arm, look at that sweep of that rod. Everything up the shoreline on the flat across here is going to see this waving motion, right? You're way up here. So instead of having your arm and your rod up here, we want to keep everything low and tight. The less that we show the fish, the more it is to our advantage. You don't want three, four false casts. What I like to do is just bring it, roll it once, pause on the water. And if you watch carefully, you'll just see that the only motion is basically from my elbow forward. So it's a little bit of a wrist, a little bit of elbow. There's absolutely nothing from my elbow to my shoulder that's moving. So I'll just show that again. So it's just up, pause, out, and on the water. And that goes easy. Again, I'm going to show that one more time because we've had... So many people that we fish with, so many people that we've guided through the years that want to bring this up and wave and wave and wave. Uh-uh. Watch how gentle and how little energy and motion. If you have a good pause on your back cast, watch how little it takes to shoot 20 feet. That's 20 feet of fly line and a 15-foot leader. So... We're going to do it with one false cast. This is the end of my drift. I'm just going to come up, pause, flick, and out. 20 feet of fly line, 15 foot leader. If there's a fish coming down there, you lead him by a rod length and hope he comes over. Stand up. I don't got him, Dave. He's, He's tough. right there. Mm, okay. Yeah, I see him now. I see the shape. Is this one just Neil? Yeah. Looking for a white mouth, buddy. Awesome, that was a complete guess. If you want the truth, yep. Complete guess. Yep, I figured. 
Again, lead it, lead it, hope for the best. That's right. Right? That's right. Wow. Still a heavy fish. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Wow. Right at you. Better than I would have landed that. Heavy, though. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. <laughs> what a fish. Oh, yeah. Heavy, hey? Yeah. See you around. Beautiful. Wow. Just going to come in on that a little tighter. Yeah, bring his head bring, up. Bring her head up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's gorgeous, hey? Yeah. Just turning now. Wow. Really? Really? Got a change, apparently. Yeah, you do. Oh, you, oh, you just nipped, eh? Yeah, you sure did. Okay, gonna go Try again. a different line. Yep. Oh. Oh, boy. That might catch second fish. And boogie pass. It's hilarious, the small one's chasing the big one right now. Right to it. Nice. Wonderful. You got your net, or you want me to throw it to you? Uh, Past the big one. Yeah. I'll uh, be back for this. Okay. I'm gonna go wide. Okay. Off my right. Okay. Slowly. Yeah. Now that big one's right to the Okay. Go around. Yeah. This is the one that was chasing that bigger one. Yeah, eh? That's funny. That's wild. Yeah, it is the male. So are you rolling the two fish that went past? Oh yeah. If you check the video, uh, what I said, um, I think it's the male chasing the female. And the reason I knew that was just because of the shape of the head. And this is, if you check the video, his, his tail was missing a bit as he went by. And that is the male. Okay, here we go, I'm just zooming in. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's nice. pretty cool. It is. Here we go. <laughs> Nice big spots on that yeah, one. Yeah, gorgeous male. Awesome. It's moving. And got her. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Just saw her move up on it, eh? Wow. That's awesome. Yep. Uh oh. 
Yeah, I'll see. So the two fish that went past, the male and the female, caught them both. Isn't that neat? Really cool. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. I would say squat on eight. No way. Yeah. Fantastic female, hey? Yeah. Could go Give down. Give it water? Yeah. Up, yeah. What a, what a female, hey? Oh, yeah. Really long. Yeah. And thick throughout. This fish has a permanent home in my mind's eye. We just saw it before we stepped on it, ever so shallow and cruising. It was spectacular to watch and for Dave to film simply incredible nymphing scenes. We were coming off some huge days and it was hot with low water, but an incoming spring kept this run cool and this fish incredibly active. While I never imagined a good hook set, I certainly had my chances. In a way, a fish like this and how it played out was a huge gift. I'm not sure we'll again spend two hours and get three takes from a seven plus pound brown cycling and putting on the show this one did.
No, hey. No. Yeah, that's a no. You didn't mind at first, but. Nice. Wicked. He was coming from way up there. That's gonna get lost in the weed if you're not careful. Yep. He came from three rod lengths up. Wow, hun. Hey. He turned off that gravel point. Yep. And it was just awesome to watch. Awesome. Nice meal. Beautiful. He's right in front of you. Wouldn't move too much, he's right there. He's just been doing laps around the top side of that right now. He's catchable. Tough, but catchable. Leave it there. Oh. It's just in the top side of it, in that dark spot. And he's going a bit further upstream. He'll go up and loop back around. Yeah. Yeah, you have to lead him. That's why you don't cast to him while he's on it. Yeah. Pull it back if you can. Leave it. Wasn't that you? No, I'm just, oh, I do now, yep. Wicked. He's using the depth big time. Yeah. That's a gorgeous old willow, eh? No kidding. Come on, fish. 
awesome. There you go. Yeah, I just couldn't turn that head up at it's all on that fish. Chunky, right? Crazy. Really chunky.